Hi everyone, welcome to this month's A Garden in Every Season Tour. July is shaping up to be a really beautiful month. We have lots of our pollinator plants on North Campus are really showing off right now. And we also have our um, rhododendron maximum, which is beginning to flower and that's very exciting. So I hope you all enjoy and let's get started. All right, so the first plant that I wanted to touch on is right here in our entrance bed to the botanical garden. And this is our smooth southern bush honeysuckle. The botanical name is Dervella sessilifolia. It's in the Dervella AC family. And as you can see, it's very attractive to pollinator species like our other native honeysuckles, but it has these small yellow flowers that are quite sweet and fragrant. And it's a very tough plant, as I mentioned. It prefers full sun, but it can really do well. We have it planted here where it gets only partial sun, so that's something to consider. And it can go quite large, so if that's a concern for you, uh, the best time to control it or prune it is in either late winter or early spring so that you can kind of maintain its shape and keep it smaller if that's something that you prefer. But again, it's a very, very hardy plant and can do well in a lot of different soils. I'm sure you all are able to hear the rain in the background as I'm filming this. It is drizzling a little bit here in the garden and we have had periodic showers and a few thunderstorms here and there uh, for the past week or so, getting the tail end of the tropical storm that was moving in a little bit farther down the east coast. and. We are expected to get more rain as we are in the temperate rainforest later on to come in the month of July. But over off here to the right, we have one of our first great laurels that are in flower, but I will touch on that a little bit later in this video. Down here off to the right, also, we have our fly poison, Amianthium muscatoxicum. So the common name fly poison is in reference to this plant, certain parts of it being ground up and used to kill flies, and the specific epithet, the muscatoxicum, uh, when translated from Latin, actually means, you know, toxic to flies. And it is pollinated by flies, so the white flowers, that's how it starts out, but as you can see farther down, they turn a light green, and that indicates that they have been already pollinated. But it has a very wide distribution range, and it is not only poisonous to flies, but to animals and humans as well. Not that I would ever suggest eating this, but in case anyone was curious. One plant that I already went over in much greater detail but wanted to highlight again in this month's tour is our cucumber root. As you can see, the fruit is actually starting to develop and like I mentioned in last month's tour, those world leaves will start to develop and get more color as we progress into fall and those tiny little green fruits that we're developing will eventually turn into a very lovely darkish black blue color. 
So it's something to look out for as the season progresses. I really wanted to take you all out into the bog garden for this month's tour because there's a lot going on and there's a lot to look for upcoming in this month of July. For example, our hollow joe pie weed, which isn't in flower right now, but look for it within the next few weeks and on into August. And farther out into the bog garden as well, we have our bushy St. John's wort which is just beginning to flower, but will be at its peak, I would say, mid-July. So keep your eyes peeled for those when you come to visit. One plant that is in flower currently is our world loose strife. Lysimachia quadrifolia, and the world is in reference to the leaves, so it has that world pattern around the stem, and the flowers themselves are a beautiful yellow color with the reddish centers, and it's interesting that these flowers actually lay above the leaf axis going all the way down the plant. And another feature that I think is very interesting that you kind of have to look very closely in person to see, but each individual petal has a very thin red line around it, which is just something beautiful, I think, to note. And also along here on this side of the bog garden, we have lots of our New York fern which is what you're seeing in the background. Another plant I wanted to highlight here in the bog garden that recently got a new name change is Silky Dogwood. So it is now Swita Amomum. Formerly the genus was Cornus. And this is in the same family as our state flower, the flowering dogwood. And as you can see, similarly, it has the same undulate leaf margins and leaf shape as the flowering dogwood. But a distinguishing feature, for the silky dogwood, is the new bark. So it's very smooth and it has a beautiful burgundy red color. Another nice thing about this tree is it offers a lot of benefits to not only pollinators, but wildlife as well. And since it's in the bog, you can intuit that it does prefer moist soils, but it can really thrive in other areas as well. And of course, similarly, it has a beautiful fall color, so there is a lot of interest year-round with this species. And earlier, while I was filming everything for this tour, there was a family of ducks that I got to see. So I wanted to share that with you. And we were very lucky here at the station to see these ducks. Uh, they're only a few months old, so we got to see them from ducklings to their almost adulthood now. So be on the lookout if you're here. Um, you might see them around or in the pond. I wanted to pop over here briefly just to mention our pitcher plants. Uh, we have a few Saracenia species that are in flower, which is those flower structures right there, as you can see. And right next to it, we have a really beautiful plant. This is the Lictrum clavatum or called the 
mountain meadow rue. It has these very, very small flowers and it's in the ranunculaceae family, so the uh, buttercup family. And you'll typically find it in shady areas and it does like moist soil, but I think it's just a beautiful plant and the soft texture of the leaves are really wonderful. And again, they're very, very small, but the soft white flowers are just a very beautiful addition as well. There's this guy down here that I noticed. I'm not a mycologist. My educated guess is Basidio mycetae, perhaps. But if there are any mycologists watching who would like to comment down below as to what they think it is, please let us know. There are several species of plants that I have already touched on or have mentioned in a previous video that are along this section of the boardwalk, but one that I have yet to touch on is elderberry. So this is Sambucus canadensis. It's the most common elderberry. It's very ubiquitous. It's a very uh, tough plant. Um, it has a very shrubby form, and as you can see, it has these beautiful white flowers. And those flowers, of course, in late summer to early fall will start to develop and can be harvested and used for potentially a medicinal use. I can't vouch for anything of that nature, but as a plant in general, it's very interesting. And the young bark has these very cool lenticels, so these spots that you can see on these areas of the bark. And just a little ways up from the elderberry on the other side is our native water lily. So this is Nymphaea odorata. We're very lucky there's a few North American water lily species. And this one is very prolific throughout the garden. When you come visit, you'll definitely have to look out for them in our pond. They're really beautiful species. And again, most of the species Nymphaea are Asian species. So we're very lucky in that regard to have such a beautiful swath of them. And we've got some more of the silky dogwood on the other side. Again, like I mentioned, it does prefer wet soils, but can really tolerate quite a lot of different conditions.
Over off on the right here, we have some of our Galax that's just finishing up flowering. If you're interested to learn more, I went into depth in last month's A Garden in Every Season tour. But I wanted to kind of round things off on this side by talking about our Great Laurel Rhododendron Maximum. Here at the Biological Station, we are classified under as a acidic cove forest type and basically what that means is a lot of our understory is predominantly this rhododendron species so it's not always in flower right depending on the canopy coverage but when it does it puts on a beautiful show and as you can see it's very attractive for our pollinator species, but like with other understory plants, it does tolerate the acidic soils that it grows in, and also being in the Ericaceae family, it lends to that as well. So we've moved out of our formal historic botanical garden to our north campus area to highlight some of the pollinator plants that are currently in flower. And the one that I wanted to highlight is Monarda didyma. This is bee balm and it's a very common herbaceous perennial for pollinators. Um, they really enjoy these very bright red flowers, and it's in the Lamiaceae family, so that's the mint family. And like with pretty much all species in the mint family, it has a square stem. And these flowers as well are um, bilabiate. So bilabiate means that there's two lips, so you have this upper lip and the bottom lip. And the red color is not only attractive to bees, but also to hummingbirds as well, which is very, very exciting. And this plant, I don't know if I mentioned it already, but it does really like full sun, but you can also plant it if you only have partial sun. And as you can see, I'm 5'8", so it can get quite tall. But if you don't want it to be as tall, there are lots of other cultivars, but you can also cut it back about halfway in early spring to lessen the height and so that way it'll be a little bit shorter in your garden if that's something that you prefer. Thank you all so much for joining me on this month's A Garden in Every Season tour. I hope you all enjoyed. Please comment down below to let us know some of your plants that you're growing um, in your home landscape or some of the plants that you enjoy looking at on this particular tour. And be sure to like us on Facebook so that you will get continual updates and monthly tours as they come out. And thank you all again so much for watching.